The Cape Crusader gets a color change. Here's your look at the Hyatt Toys. This is the Think Geek exclusive variant Batman. Exquisite Mini is a new stand series for 118th super articulation action figures from the folks over at Hyatt Toys. Thinking we're going to go ahead and start this review with some measurements. Mm hmm, mm hmm. We're going to stop the tape measure right to the very top of Batman's ears, which I think are right about there. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, you're looking at the figure standing 4.3 inches in height, which translates to centimeters as being 10.9, about 11 centimeters tall. Unfortunately, like Superman, I don't have the original uh, Batman here I can show you, but I can do not one better, but I can certainly do one extra thing. I can show you guys the comparison between the variant Superman, which was this one on the left that we already had a look at, and the variant Batman, the one that we're going to be having a look at in a second. Superman is a little bit taller, so of course the original releases of the figures would also reflect that as well. Batman would have had a really dark color scheme. Well, I did do the review of those, so even though I can't necessarily show you the uh, the comparisons here, uh, certainly I can most de definitely direct your attention, maybe after this review, to checking out some of my other Hyatt Toys reviews, in which I've also had a look at the original color schemes for both Injustice 2 Superman and Injustice 2 Batman. Not much really gets changed from his original concept design to this variant edition other than just really some changes of colors. Things like the familiar display stand hasn't changed at all. In fact, the original Batman did have the same display stand done in metallic purple. Uh, I really do like these stands. I'm sure I sound like a broken record by this point, but I do really like the designs of these. I also like the fact that they edge these and add some darker shading to it as well. Uh, some really neat looking kind of uh, tactile decorations added to the top there. Uh, like I said, the stand is exactly the same as all the others. Now the thing about these is that they have these little slots, two on every side of this rectangle display, display base. And also coming included with that is the same eye brackets that would have come with all of the Hyatoy releases. To show you how that works, I'm just really going to take two of them for the time being because we only have, at this present time, looked at the Superman. And I'm going to take Superman's display base, and just to demonstrate how that works, probably would have been easier if I took the, there you go, take the eye brackets off first, line up the pieces to what, whichever direction you want. Keeping in mind, you can do it from the side, or you can do it from the top or the bottom. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to do it by connecting the two sides together and all I'm going to do is take that eye bracket and it fits quite snugly in place until both the uh, both the bases are attached quite securely to one another. And again, you just attach it like so. It's not going to go anywhere. You can certainly do the Dairy Queen blizzard test till the cows come home, my friend, and it ain't going to go anywhere. So again, it's a nice way to expand out the display bases as you can see here as well, like the pattern is the same, but I've just switched it around. So on one side, it's a little bit different than the other. But again, you could just continue this until you have a much larger diorama. We're going to put that to the side. I'm sure you don't want to spend the next 15 minutes watching this guy talking about for the next 15 minutes, these display stands. So I'm just going to put those to the side and we'll have a look at the rest of the accessories. Batman does come with the grapple gun. I think there is a variation of color here that's been done to the grapple gun. It's done here all in gold, glorious, spectacular, metallic gold. Some silvers added there to the to the bottom as well as to the top section there. And even like the hook itself has also been painted in silver. The handle is about the only thing that is a little bit darker in contrast. It's been done in a dark black. Again, a nice little representation of the grapple gun. He also comes included, and these don't, I don't think these are that different, if not at all different from the original releases. He comes with these little tiny batarangs. I can't stress this enough. These are little tiny batarangs. Three of them, actually. And if you look at them all, all of them, a little difficult to actually grab off of the display base here, the backdrop here. 
Uh, they are all identical to one another. These are attached to the clam, the clamshell tray on the inside of the packaging. It involves you peeling away the tape. Um, I almost was worrisome because when I took the tape off, it seemed like there's a little bit of paint that was left behind. But like looking at all the batterings, it doesn't look like any of them have had any damage done to them. Uh, like I said, they are very, very, very small. Uh, he does have hands suited. We were going to talk about the hands in a second, but I know I'll forget to show you. He does have hands suited for holding the batarangs. So there's that. You can also actually take the batarang and fit it in between his fingers. It's not as easy of, a, of an accomplishment, mind you. There you go. You can also put it in between his pointer finger, I guess, and his middle finger. You can put that in there as well. And I risk realizing now I risk the idea of doing the blizzard test with it so I'll just put my hand underneath it but it seems to hold them relatively well and I guess rounding out the rest of it he does come with a series of interchangeable hands now in his sockets when you initially get this guy out of the packaging he actually does come with let me just grab the other one here he does come with a pair of kryptonite brass knuckles. I just uh, have taken one of the hands off, but this is what it would look like when you get them both out of the packaging. Well, both hands would be in the sockets when you get them out of packaging with the kryptonite brass knuckles. Or you can swap out, like I've done right here, swap it out for a hand that's suited for holding the grapple gun or hands suited for holding the various uh, uh, batarangs. And then he also has a relaxed hand. And uh, that's all the hands that he comes with. I guess that would be a total of six hands, kind of mirror copies or hand reversed mirror copies to one another. But uh, those are the different hand options. Now, let's say, if you will, why not? We can talk about this. Take that hand off and let's replace it with one of the other grabbing hands. Just put that into the pegs right there. There we go. And that's how you change out Batman's hands. So those are all the accessories that come included with the Cape Crusader. Let's have a look at this Batman. Now, the Batman before would have had this same mold. The one thing that has now changed, obviously, is the color scheme. Color scheme that's rather interesting, I have to admit. Kind of harks back to his original classic Silver Age colors, in which you would have gray, a gray, primarily an all-gray suit, even though it kind of changed a little bit down in the lower legs. And then you've got yourself a blue cowl and blue cape. Now, they've done one better, though. They've added all these extra kind of highlights, if you will. Blue running down the sleeve and blue running down the leg in different panels. But then they've gone ahead and added this, this interesting, if not maybe not the most successfully applied, yellow paint. They've got yellow panel lining down, running down. If you line up the arms, they line up decently enough. You got this yellow line that runs down the length of his arm and down into his hand. The one thing about this is being that it's yellow paint. Yellow paint is something that if, you, if it's not applied as a second coat, often at times you'll actually see the color peeking through underneath it. It's more apparent, especially here in cases like his arms, where you don't see, like it doesn't look like it's a fully finished yellow. Maybe a second coat of yellow could have gone a long way. Other than that, though, like I said, I'm digging the gray color palette, the bat emblem done all in black. There's a close-up look at his face. I like the head portrait, I have to admit. This chin guard, this extra section of his cowl, I think lends itself well to him being looking like he's got armor. Normally, like I said, if you had checked out the initial review, go, by all means, go check that out. This would have been done in more of a darker black color scheme. But kind of liking the gray, I have to admit. The gray, kind of like Superman, doesn't have a fully finished look, but it actually kind of works well because it looks like he's got more like plating rather than a fabric costume. Some blue accents done there and gold also into his uh, utility belt. I don't know if it's supposed to be there. There's a few little flakes. It seems like the paint has been removed. Moving down the rest of his body. There's the back. I keep moving the cloth cape. One of the hindrances, I suppose, of being cloth capes. On the one end, I love cloth capes because they have a natural flow to them. But that also can be a hindrance because I keep moving the cloth cape out of the way to show you the back of his plating there. Like I said, his armored up suit of Batman it really actually works well. And I'm digging the blue, I have to admit. Especially on his face. The blue actually works well. 
as a contrast to the rest of the colors that are on his face. You can see even like they've painted in the eyes and the shadowing around the socket openings of his cowl. Really a nice representation of Batman. This may not be everyone's cup of tea. Granted, I understand that because some people aren't too crazy about the three and three quarter inch scale. I, myself, growing up with G.I. Joe's, wholeheartedly embrace the three and three quarter inch scale figures. Something which, again, back in the day, we never had fully articulated Batmans, fully articulated Supermans. So again, Hyatt Toys have kind of answered that call for me. Something I wanted when I was, even since I was younger, I've wanted superhero figures. Fully posable, granted, yes, superhero G.I. Joe style figures, because they were always like smaller superhero figures, but they were very limited in articulation. Ones that come to my mind are like the Super Powers figures, which again only had limited articulation, and most of the time they also had a gimmick as well. Let's have a look at this guy's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. He doesn't have a swap out head option like Superman did have, but he does have basically the same makeup. A ball joint right there and a ball joint at the top, meaning that you can then move the head up and down a little bit more than what you normally would be able to do. If you want to have Batman with a slightly more brooding presence to him, that secondary ball joint certainly does come in handy. Upper torso ball joint. Most definitely a lower torso ball joint. Shoulders hinge outward. And much like Batman, much like Superman's, Batman's shoulders here have these plates that are free moving. In other words, when you are moving the arms out, they do do a pretty good enough job of staying out of the way, allowing the arms to move a little higher than what you would expect. They move all the way around, being that the shoulders are also, the plates are attached to the shoulders, means also you can do this, which you wouldn't be able to do that normally. Bend at the elbow, they rotate at the lower arms and rotate in the hands all the way around. Batman's legs split out. They go forward, a little hindered, unfortunately, by these plates on his thighs. You can only get the legs only so far out, unless you move the leg kind of outward on an angle. Can afford a little bit of extra posability that way. Swivel at the top, cut of the thigh, double hinge happening on his knees, his kneecap area there. And then like Batman, or like Superman, I keep jumping back and forth here. Like Superman, Batman does have ankle pivot back and forth. You can rotate the, the feet all the way around. And you can also hinge his feet up. Nice looking figure, I have to admit. These variants are a great opportunity for them to double dip a mold. We're just going to get a display stand happening. And why not? We'll keep the two display stands connected to one another. Again, as I mentioned with the original uh, Batman figure, uh, also incorporating a secondary uh, display stand. Let me just go ahead and get his feet properly planted there. There you go. Not quite. Almost there. Almost there. There you go. All right. Uh, incorporating a secondary display stand going to wrap this review up with that secondary display stand attached. Also affords the fact that the figure has larger footprint space to spread his legs to, you know, get in a more action pose. And then most definitely, if you have another Injustice figure, like we just had a look at Superman, you can pit the two against one another with the larger attached stands, giving you a little bit more of a battleground terrain for them to attack on. So far, I'm two for two for digging these Think Geek variant exclusives from the folks over at Hyatt Toys. The color variations that they ended up going with actually work quite well for these figures. Superman's is a little bit more drastic because they inverted the colors. Instead of formerly blue, it went red and vice versa. With Batman here, they went with something a little bit more traditional, giving him classic Cape Crusader colors. And I actually think it works well for this particular mold. The fact that these are also superposable figures means that you can get them in a little bit more creative poses than maybe some of the figures that would have existed back in the day when G.I. Joe and three, three, three and three quarter inch figures existed. And again, this is probably why I'm loving this line so much. Being such an avid collector and fan of the Joes back in the day, those three and three quarter inch figures worked so well for me. To get the equivalent of that in superheroes usually meant it was either Secret War figures, some of the Toy Biz stuff, or of course we were getting Superpowers figures. And while those were good for their time, they're awfully dated by today's standards, being the fact that they are so limited in posability, and they usually relied on a gimmick. Here you have three and three quarter inch figures that are very nicely sculpted, but equally so, they are super posable as well. I'm really liking some of the stuff that's coming out from Hyatt Toys. You probably have also noticed 
so far in two of these reviews, two for two, that unfortunately the boxes that came included with these figures were slightly crushed, resulting in unfortunately using a display stand to kind of keep them upright. That is a, a one little disappointing aspect of uh, getting these figures because the folks over at Hyatt Toys were nice enough to send these my way. But yeah, the box has got a little damaged in the mailing process of getting it from point A to point B. If you guys managed to pick up the Think Geek exclusive variants of the Injustice 2 figures, let me know down below what you guys think of them, or maybe what your favorite figure is so far. We got one more to cover off, and I won't tell you who it is, but let me just tell you, she does also come with a different variation of colors. Saying that it's she probably might be some indicator as the other variant that we're going to be having a look at. Let me know, though, what you guys think of these figures down below in the comments section. If you are new to this channel or long-time viewers, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And make sure, if you do make the time available, head on over to your next-door neighbor and turn on that bell notification so that when future videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. Like I said, we're going to have a look at one more Injustice 2 a variation from Think Geek and the folks over at Hyatt Toys. I'll even like leave it to you guys to guess as to who it's going to be. You'll know soon enough as the review of hers will be coming up in the next uh, in the next video. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.